Hello, welcome to Tensile Ground Coffee, a few minutes on ground engineering to enjoy it while having your coffee. Well, continuing with the Ask Andrew season, uh, we've had a question uh, just in from Sandy, Sandy Gravel, and she asks, how do you design stabilizing geogrids? What a great question. What a specific question, let's say, but uh, timely, as we shall see. Um, because that's what we've been doing just uh, lately at Tensa is uh, thinking over recent years about how a stabilizing geogrid works and what features are there that can improve the mechanical stabilization even more. So this is the, the new Tensa Interax uh, geogrid. And as we've seen in previous episodes, uh, mechanical stabilization works because these stones, they interlock with the, with the geogrid. So with a bit of confinement from other stones above, that gets pushed into there, and now the stones can't move. If they can't move, if they can't rotate, you fundamentally improve the mechanical properties of the aggregate, and you create a mechanically stabilized layer. So a stabilizing geogrid is a ground improvement technique, as opposed to a reinforcing geogrid like the biaxial geogrids that are designed uh, purely in terms of tensile strength. Uh, or stiffness. A stabilizing geogrid is very different. We have to think about how, what's the best way to uh, restrict the movement of the particles and so improve the, the mechanical properties. So as I said we've been thinking about how to do this and then we come up with theories, we, we test out um, different ideas in our large tracks. You'll test in the laboratory also our trafficker test uh, and then when we've got a product that uh, we think is, is got the, the best uh, stabilizing properties, we then test it full scale uh, for platform testing, unpaved roads, paved roads, uh, rail, and so on. And uh, this is what we come up with. And it's got several features that uh, significantly improve its mechanically stabilizing uh, properties. So you'll notice that we've got uh, different shaped apertures here, all different shapes that better match uh, the shapes of typical aggregate. And you notice that we've got quite a large open area, particularly around here where there are no nodes. So we've got these oriented elements here with a lot of stiffness, but uh, a lot of open space for the aggregate to, to pack together so we don't disrupt the uh, compaction. That's very important. So we want to maintain the aggregate properties. Uh, and then um, you see the ribs are in lots of different directions. That maximizes the opportunity for stones to interact and interlock with the ribs in all, all different directions. So there's, um, there's actually more interlock and interaction with the stones than there were uh, in previous uh, uh, geogrids. Uh, you'll also notice, of course, the, uh, the change in color. That's because there's a new material on the upper and lower surfaces that has higher frictional properties, so we get uh, better friction and also slight indentation as well, so that also any particles that are in contact with the rib here, they're getting more confined due to slight indentation and better frictional properties. Uh, one of my favorite features is with these hexagons, is if I lay it straight because of these nodes that are thicker, actually the hexagon is standing slightly above the surface. So that makes it even easier for stones as they're placed to interlock and get uh, underneath uh, these hexagons, uh, even when it's on, on a flat surface. So you see all those features uh, go into making this uh, a much improved uh, uh, stabilizing geogrid product. So I hope, Sandy, that's given you an overview of how we design a stabilizing geogrid. That's all for this episode of Tensile Ground Coffee. Thanks for watching and see you next time.